tarot card. It's like a big hug from the universe, showing you've done great so far. Time to celebrate. The world card is all about finishing strong and starting fresh. Think of it as a high five from destiny. Imagine the world card as a big thumbs up saying, you did it. Ready for the next adventure? The world card is like reaching the finish line of a big race. You made it. What's next? Picture the world card as a giant ta-da. It's your moment to shine and embrace new beginnings. The world card is like a big congratulations balloon. You've reached an awesome milestone. Imagine the world card as a big rainbow after a storm. Bright days ahead. The world card is like a gold star on your journey. You're doing amazing. The world card is like a big you rock sticker. Keep being awesome. The world card is like a victory dance in tarot form. Cheers to your success. Morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Good morning. Hi, Hershey. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you here, Jeff. Hope you're feeling oh, better. I you as well. I am. Thank you. And everybody, glad to see. Glad you're all here. The first one that came out of my deck. <laughs> the world. Weird. Okay. They call me. Get to bed. Go to I bed. No, I, I. Yeah, it's middle of the night for her still, right? Got to be. Viviani, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Okay, get you get some sleep now, Nicole. This will always be on and available to watch later. Good night, beautiful. So, Hershey, how are you? Phenomenal. How are you, Brother Thomas? Um, I am here, thanks to you. Um, or I would have been still sleeping. We know. <laughs> We know. We got you. Get your lazy butt out of bed. We got to go back, back, back to school again. <laughs> and Jeff, how are you today? I'm doing well. Um, I don't know how many people saw last night my first time collaboration with... Um, Amy Warrior Princess was so much fun. So I hope you all go and check it out either on her channel or on mine. It was a lot of fun. I have so much to catch up on, like this <laughs> packing and, and, and getting things closed and finalized and then like starting to get things like transferred and set with a new address and I just got the address like yesterday so it's just like it's like I haven't had time to breathe so I have so oh much God. to catch up on so please nobody judge me by being late to the party until I get my move done and then You're I will going south, right? for a week <laughs> yeah. so Michelle I know you're still prepping how are you today I'm good, thanks. Just pulling out my cards. Just pulling out your cards. I yeah. appreciate it. Let me mute. Do you know this hits. card was originally created for Thoth? Um. It, was, uh, it wasn't part of the tarot before that? <clears throat> the four beasts that represent this card, the angel, the eagle, the bull, and the lion, represent the four evangelistics of the four elements. Although its entirety is centered in tarot now, it wasn't until Crowley implied that the 777 from the Book of Thoth was the purest form of the wreath that completed the cycle. I would say because I, I view the major arcana 
You know, but it says, yeah, in most cases, until they purchased a Marseille pack, they didn't know that there was a world card. So the world card, I guess, is one of the newer tarot cards, I guess, and it's still hundreds of years old. So, <laughs> yeah, being, being part of the Marseille. Um, yeah. That's kind of cool. I just read that. I was like, really? Uh, another reason to love me some Aleister Crowley. <laughs> I love that, man. This been lights joined us. Hey. hey. I'm still trying Finally, to figure out where I can find your brain is anywhere. You should be wearing green. I'm not, and I would be pinched, and I would be pinching all of you if you're not wearing green. I have green. Well, I have green on, but I can't show where I'm wearing it at. <laughs> I don't, I, bullshit. I call bullshit. <laughs> I, I have uh, the green socks that I explained to you that Jose put on the other night for me. After <laughs> massage. Okay. Green so, and tattoo. Green and tattoo. Okay, we're gonna go through our upright keywords, and I, I've, I've got videos for that and uh, everything else. And this week it's uh, my voice that you get to compare against last week of uh, the computer voices. Completion, the state of being finished or concluded, indicating the end of a significant phase or journey. Fulfillment, the feeling of satisfaction or contentment that comes from achieving one's goals or desires. Integration, the process of combining or bringing together different elements into a harmonious whole. Wholeness, the state of being complete or unbroken, encompassing all aspects of the self and one's experiences. Success, the accomplishment of an aim or purpose, often associated with achieving positive outcomes or reaching desired milestones. Achievement, the act of successfully accomplishing a goal or task, typically resulting from effort and perseverance. Unity, the state of being united or interconnected, indicating a sense of harmony and oneness with oneself and the universe. Accomplishment, the successful completion or, or achievement of something, often resulting in a sense of pride or fulfillment. Enlightenment, the state of being spiritually awakened or intellectually illuminated, often associated with deep understanding and insight. Cosmic Consciousness, awareness of one's connection to the universe and the interrelatedness of all things, leading to a sense of profound unity and enlightenment. So not quite as uh, chunky as last week's judgment card, but uh, There's still quite a few uh, keywords that can jog your memory when you go to read the the world card. Hmm. You found something. I, I know no, that. I'm actually moment. looking for something. It says the swastika is tied to this sign. I'm trying to find a card that's got a damn swastika in it because I'm throwing that whole deck away. Well, you know, it wasn't always. If the, I see one swastika, please don't let me find a swastika. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it was an ancient uh, symbol used across. Uh, Hitler stole areas. it. Yeah, Hitler stole it. So, um, yeah, okay, well, the word swastika is written here, and if I find a swastika on one of my world cards, that deck is out of my life. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I'm being biased right now, but hell no. <laughs> I just Maybe can't. there's a different definition to I'm it. I'm dealing with the Hierophant, but I will not take a swastika. Absolutely not. In my directory book, it says um, the world symbolizes not only fulfillment of one's wishes and goals, but how you are whole, whole, self-aware and integrated. This card implies a sense of accomplishment and prosperity and acclaim for those who deserve it. The world picks up 
on themes and symbols from earlier cards, such as the four elements shown on the Wheel of Fortune. The goddess dances through the heavens, her left knee bent, creating a triangle similar to the hangman's dance. The wreath surrounding the goddess is tied to two infinity symbols, showing that the world card pulls together all that is so that the pool can at last come home. An example interpretations as you now card you have found your direction and can be sure of whatever plans you put into motion. The outcome will be perfect. It can also imply that a long-term project has come full circle and you are now feeling a sense of closure and accomplishment. The world also implies that you are in the right place, doing the right thing and feeling fulfilled. As a future or outcome card, it heralds new fulfilling beginnings. As a blockage card, you may be too sure of yourself and need to ask yourself some straight questions. Very good. So the 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 infinity symbols are the are the X's tying the wreath together, holding the wreath yeah. together, the top and bottom. Isn't this an infinity sign? Yeah. Infinity is the Olympus thing, but right? Yeah. The Olympus figure thing. eight, yeah. the sideways figure eight. But, like right here. It's, it's binding the wreath at the top and the bottom of the card. In this depiction, yeah. In oh, okay, so I see it in that one. Okay, I see what you're telling. Okay. Yeah, in my okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, I've got it in this one. This one's got that. Um, yeah, this is my sassy burrito. Hmm. Totally. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't have my 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 spicy burrito doesn't have that. What is your spicy burrito? Is it different? There's my world card. It's the same one you just tell <laughs> Hold that. on, I can't see. Oh, yeah, that's mine. I thought you said you had a different one than mine, spicy burrito. Okay. No, I said I don't see it in my spicy burrito. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, me neither. It, it's just the tail, the snake eating its tail completion, the circle, the cycle, you know? And then Gypsy JJ, yes, uh, this is our Sunday class where we're doing a deep dive on each of the tarot cards. And we've gone all the way from the Fool to 21 today, the world. Um, so our Major Arcana is done, and we'll be starting with Aces next class. Completion, celebration, starting a new beginning. Yeah, yeah, Hitler stole the Amber Room. He stole too much, but yeah, <laughs> when it was religious for like the Jainisms or Hinduisms or whoever it was the, the that he stole it from, like and then twisted it and inverted it and made it to what it is now. That, yeah, I just I I can't honor that. I just can't. It, it's depressing. So, are we ready for our reverse keywords? Definitely. Okay, another video. Incompletion, the state of being unfinished or unresolved, indicating a lack of closure or finality in a situation or phase. Unfulfilled, not experiencing satisfaction or contentment, often due to unmet expectations or unrealized goals. Disintegration. The process of breaking apart or falling apart, indicating a lack of cohesion or harmony within oneself or one's experiences. Fragmentation, the state of being divided or fragmented, lacking unity or wholeness. Setback, a reversal or obstacle that hinders progress or achievement, leading to disappointment or frustration. Unachieved, not successfully accomplishing a goal or task often resulting in feelings of inadequacy or failure. Disconnection, the state of being disconnected or disjointed, lacking a sense of unity or connection with oneself and the universe. Unfulfilled potential, not realizing or fully utilizing one's talents, abilities, or opportunities, leading to feelings of wasted potential. Ignorance, lack of awareness or understanding, 
often resulting in confusion or misunderstanding about oneself and the world. Disconnect from the universe. Feeling disconnected or alienated from the universe and the interconnectedness of all things, leading to a sense of isolation or disconnection. Wow, there was a glitch in the matrix there. The th- th- things. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of has nothing to do with um the world card, but... I was told I, I opened my fortune cookie from yesterday and my, my message is the desire of love is to give the desire of lust is to get. So in case anybody was confused, <laughs> sorry, All right. continue with the regularly scheduled. I, I see it as a win-win either way. <laughs> give and take. So we have some great chatters out there. They're talking about uh, the symbol that the bad man stole and turned it on its end. It it used to lay flat in the original things, but Hitler put it on the diagonal. Yeah, he inverted it and did some other crap to it. I still can't find uh, what you found, Thomas. You said Uranus? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. We're, no, no, no. I mean, I'm just like, wow, I, I literally can't find that anywhere. I want to find that. That sounds interesting. I can literally only find Neptune and Saturn. Like it says planet would be Saturn and it says astrology would be Neptune. And it's like, I'm, I don't I don't get it. I want to read what Thomas is reading. <laughs> well, you, uh, I'm only going by memory and I've uh-huh. been doing I've been doing a lot of these videos for different cards, so maybe I have another card in mind. But you did ask me that within the first 10 minutes of waking up today. So uh, I probably am mistaken. (laughs) I'm laughing at what Jane just said, not you. (laughs) Okay, uh, I'm going to put on the video for our symbolism. Symbolism for 21, the world card. Woman, often depicted as the central figure in the world card, representing the feminine aspect of creation and the nurturing energy of the universe. Wreath or garland, encircling the center figure, symbolizing completion, unity, and wholeness. It represents the cyclical nature of life and interconnectedness of all things. Four figures or creatures. Placed in each corner of the card, typically representing the four fixed signs of the zodiac, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus, or the four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. They symbolize balance and harmony in the four corners of the world, an oval or circle, surrounding the central figure and containing the wreath, representing the cyclical nature of life, eternity, and infinite possibilities. It symbolizes the continuous cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Rods or wands, sometimes depicted in the corners of the cards, symbolizing creativity, inspiration, and spiritual growth. They represent the active masculine energy needed to manifest dreams and desires into reality. Laurel wreath. Occasionally, seen in some versions of the world card, symbolizing victory, achievement, and success. It represents the rewards and recognitions earned through hard work and perseverance. Dancers are figures in motion, often depicted within the oval or circle, symbolizing movement, celebration, and joy. They represent the dynamic energy of life and the joy that comes from living in harmony with the universe. Animals, sometimes depicted around the central figure, representing the natural world and the interconnectedness of all living beings. They symbolize the harmony between humans and nature, as well as the balance between instinct and intellect. Caduceus, or Wand of Hermes, occasionally seen in some versions of the world card, 
symbolizing balance, healing, and transformation. It represents the integration of opposing forces and the ability to transcend duality. Mandorla, or Visca Pisces, occasionally seen surrounding the central figure, symbolizing the intersection of spiritual and material worlds. It represents the divine union of opposites and the balance between heaven and earth. So that was Visca. I uh, misplaced letters while I was reading. <laughs> so any oh. questions on the symbolism? Uh, no, no. Um, I, I'm fascinated by um, the, the representation of the crowning of the hero. Like that's just like, I'm loving that. Like I, I read that in one of these three books in my lap just a few minutes ago that the the first symbol of this sign is the crowning of the hero and i didn't understand it now when i asked thomas i was like what are they actually saying and he was like they're celebrating the fool not giving up you know not giving in to temptation completing the journey so man i i, I like it i like it i like it Jane, if you're still here, I'm yeah. never going to see, I think well, I'm going to look at the fire dancer yeah. as a world card. Dave Matthews, fire dancer. It also says it could be the, the representation of your 21st birthday. Ah, that makes sense. Like, it's, like making it to your 20. Well, I'm, I mean, that comes out of the signs and symbol source that I have. Kids, and now you're recognized as an adult. Right, right. Wait. Like this, the my signs and symbols, um, it says that the first sign is that it means you've reached your 21st birthday. Like, I guess a lot of people don't make their 21st birthday. So for those that did, they have completed a cycle every 21 years, I guess. Okay. I guess I got two years left. <laughs> I think it's cool. I like it. I like it. Some of my okay. The, the answer to your burning question will be in our next video, but I, I do see the major arcana as three sets of seven. The fool's stands alone outside of that but one to seven eight to 14 and 15 to 21. so you've got your physical journey you've got your mental journey and then you've got your spiritual journey represented in those seven cards so i can see where justice and strength might be required to, to flip-flop in in that uh, depiction of the roadmap. When I think of the card, I th think of assimilation because you're assimilating everything you've learned as you grow spiritually or from other situations. So in addition to recognition because in the visions of life tarot it's the recognition card it's like you're recognizing it and then it's it's public recognition and it's um uh inward recognition i just wish i wonder though in the reverse what it would mean so we'll talk about that if you know it's more so of a i like that you're, you're uh you're leveling up in the matrix you you graduated from a C cell to a D cell and they need to move you <laughs> or you're going to overwhelm that grid that you're plugged into currently. <laughs> okay, we're going to start our Zodiac video. Zodiac signs. The four fixed signs of the Zodiac are often associated with the world card. Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus. These signs represent stability, determination, and completion, reflecting the themes of the World Tarot card. Planetary Association The World card is not traditionally associated with a specific planet. 
However, some interpretations link it to the planet Saturn, which represents discipline, structure, and the completion of cycles. Saturn's influence adds a sense of finality and accomplishment to the card's meaning. So you are correct, Hershey. It is Saturn. I've, I've just filmed so many videos in between that. Oh, sorry. Didn't do it on purpose. Go away. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay. <clears throat> I was just keeping up on comments. I didn't know if Jeff saw his comment, but he did. He saw his question. He put it in there. Got it. Hey. Mm -hmm. So when you think about like what does like there's times where, you know, we don't want to do things over again. Right. So this is kind of like a huge stop sign as well as a, a completion. Right. A stop sign brings something to to a pause. Right. So some of us don't always celebrate the completion. We just stop and then keep going, you know? Um, but I think this is like the literally the opportunity to not just stop. Um, this is literally gathering resupplies that worked to go into the next journey is how I kind of think I'm seeing it now. Um, minus the the speed bumps. We've got speed bumps everywhere we go. So um, I think it's, it's, it's really just understanding the needs for the next one. Like you, what worked here may not work in the next one, but there maybe is a version of it that works, you know, and because you kind of got the foundation of it from the last time, I think it helps carry into the next time. So I think there's a lot of celebration that maybe could be intensified with the completion part, you know, because graduating high school, graduating college, graduating, you know, going from, you know, where you got to do like the, um, what is it called, where you have to like do so many hours of like, not necessarily community internship. service, but like um, internship or internship or whatever, like those are all like little mini versions of the world, right? Every time you complete something. Do you guys see it less as a karma card? A lot of people read it as karma. But I mean, in the spiritual oh, community. Oh, really? Debate about, yeah. I don't know if we should read it as karma or not. Because it I, really I've never thought of it as exactly karma. I mean, I, I, I'm going to have to like think about that. Yeah. I don't read it as... I, see, I think it's simplistic to read it as karma because it, it, it doesn't really necessitate your own ability to do the things that you want to do and i think it's about more interactive approach that the individual takes so if it's if it's reversed it's just about inaction but i don't see it as some people think of it as like a wheel almost like the wheel of fortune when they see that spiral going around which is i, I think a fallacy in the world card i think it's more about the crown and the victory than it is about um about karma so when when i think an octagon is a stop sign right mm -hmm. so an octagon is one of the major original symbols for this card like the octagon and the seven pointed star are some of the first symbols of this card so when you think of like a stop sign like i said i only saw that because i see the octagon shape right but when i look at the card i see an oval every one of these oval. represent an oval shaped thing or they have no shape whatsoever they have a woman they have a snake they have a skeleton, they have a child completion. And then they've got, you know, when you go into um, whatever this deck is, um, I forget what this one is. Um, like there's just, um, you know, like I'm not even sure what that is. It just looks like, I don't even know. But anyway, I'm gonna have to really see that. Like, I would almost think it would be like the, the the punishment to karma 
I don't, I don't, maybe I'm not seeing it right. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to I really mean. sit with that. Yeah, I don't see it as karma. Mean. I see it as the, yeah, I know that sounds if harsh, it, but yeah. Or if it were reversed, yeah. just simply an action on, on the individual's part about yeah. what you're doing. Stuck I mean, in a comfort zone, uh, incomplete projects, need to finish what you start. You are the universe expressing itself as a human for a little while. But um, it's just okay. stagnant comfort zone. And then I was, when you were talking about seeing um, ovals, I was like, it's a portal in a meeting to me. I don't know. It's it's completing uh -huh. and you're moving on to something new. It's wholeness. Yep, yep. I definitely yep. see that. Yeah. Yep. Well, it could, uh, if you are leveling up, it could be sort of like the... Uh, taking a gap year between high school and college and going out. Right. That's what, yeah, that, that, you know, that celebration that, yeah. that, that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, what I, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So, so it might be that, um, when you literally have the world at your, or you have the world at your feet. Yeah. And, and that during that gap year, you know, you're, you're finding yourself, <laughs> you're finding your worldview, you're expanding, outside your local uh knowledge so you're you're right. preparing for the next journey correct yes i agree with that yes so the I, idea I, that I it's a, a simply a completion card doesn't yeah. do it justice and like a lot of these cards there's so much more than you know what my little brain can scratch the surface mm -hmm. and recall so you say you don't see it as completion then, Jeff? I do. Or you I think, think that's I, think I think I, I think I oversimplified it by seeing it as just completion. Well, if you look at the whole major arcana, it's all part of the cycle. So now once you hit the world, you return back to the pool. Yes. Because yes. You're, you on you're on a new journey. You're on a new journey. And because you completed it, I feel like you get to carry the knowledge and the tools with you because you completed it. And that's why it, it um, has some, it's symbolically, it, it has many symbols of all the other cards within it because you gather and you learn, a, like the Wheel of Fortune is part of a cycle and journey and learning all your ups and downs, all the little pieces, like, I don't know, I, I can't find the right words to explain it, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Um, it, it It's just... So if death is about change, this wouldn't be about change then. You know what I mean? If death it, represents change. It would be um, celebrating, but getting ready for the next iteration. Hmm. Okay. See, I don't think you have to experience in depth or in detail every step of the major arcana. So I could have bypassed the death card in this cycle because I was already I was though that wasn't something I needed to learn I already was aware of that and like you know what I mean you can skip over like different phases if you've phases already learned okay you, yeah if you've already learned, learned that lesson it's, that, yeah. yeah if you understand yeah. it already maybe you yeah have to learn within it that you, you don't have to experience it again not. it's already incorporated then that game moves you on to something else but then there's always that enlightenment of that tower moment at any point because you something clicks suddenly so now it doesn't mean you have to go in order i mean it's just you jump around but when you hit that world you've completed a cycle of fulfillment and understanding an accomplishment a goal a project even though because there's different scales right there's the micro scale and the macro scale as like in internally and externally mm -hmm. you know and different so many layers right So uh, here she's here she has been having problems with her internet, but she she also has um, a family that contacts her. So maybe she needed to duck out for that. Hopefully everything is okay, and she'll be back when she can. Um, we're gonna go to numerology. And there she is. Am 
Must be an internet problem. You good, love? We're going to start the numerology. In numerology, the number 21 breaks down to 2 plus 1, which equals 3. The number 3 is associated with creativity, expression, and communication. So, the world card could signify the culmination of creative endeavors or the successful completion of a project that involves communication and expression. It's like the universe saying, you nailed it. The magical number three in numerology. It's like a triple scoop ice cream cone of numerology, world full of flavor and variety. In numerology, three is associated with creativity, self-expression, communication, optimism, and social interaction. It is the life of the party, the artist's muse, and the charmer in any situation. So if you're seeing lots of threes pop up, get ready for a whirlwind of creativity and social butterflies. So sorry, I didn't mean to trigger you uh, with that three of hearts there. I'm gonna excuse myself for a moment. The sky is starting to grumble and get angry. There's lightning. I'm gonna just see if my dog has to pee really quick before it rains. I'll be right back. Okay. So the, the three of uh, swords, you know. I have a question. I just found something and it says the world <clears throat> weighs the world. This is not a card of endings. This is a card that results and tends to lean towards the physical. Can be a sign of reward, punishment, and imprisonment. This card goes with karmic balance. Okay. So as you sow. So I think maybe Jeff is on to something um, that maybe I need to maybe dive in a little deeper to with that. I just think the explanations all of you gave from those books are better only because like, if you don't believe in car or if like you believe that your own actions aren't always going to bring about a certain result, then where does that leave the world? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause sometimes yeah. they're just accidents of fate. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they have nothing mm -hmm. to do with karma. So I'm kind of like, I don't understand why that card is about karma to some people. I, I don't get it. Yeah. The world is ambiguous. So it, yeah, it's definitely true. They may be thinking about it like what goes around comes around. And since being the completion and getting ready to begin yeah. again. I think the explanations that I do like not being on the third floor, floor anymore, by the way. I was back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We were we were talking about karma there, Michelle. And so anybody in chat, do you have any thoughts on that? What do you say? Is it a karma card or is it just a, a pause before leveling up and starting a new cycle? Well, there is part of this meaning here. It says this card implies a sense of accomplishment and prosperity and a claim for those who deserve it. So possibly that's part of the karma. Are you on mute, babe? Yeah, you're on mute, Hershey. Well, it's quite busy here, so sorry. Um, it says for conscious thought, right? Now, this is my handy dandy Crowley book. It says from a psychological perspective only, the universe, meaning the world, personifies the awaking conscious to the self-regulating power of the creative self in the current. So the? <laughs> I've never seen conscious as anything other than current. So to take conscious 
and separate it from current to me would be um, asinine, but that's just my opinion because to me, if you're conscious, then you're, cr you're current, you're present, you're, you're consciously aware of what's going on. Um, I took it as a current, as in energy flow. But that's what I was getting ready to say. But I wonder if you're talking about like a current, like a flow. That's how, is I, what I, that's how I understood yeah, that's it. That's what I was about to say. I wonder if they mean like current. I thought it was flow, flow like that. Yeah. I always say you got to ride the current, right? You can't fight the current. Um, and self-regulating is what's really important. Like I've been trying to self-regulate, you know, this weekend. Not, okay, so uh, maybe, a lot of things, let emotions and feelings come through, but then self-regulate and bring yourself back to balance. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And maybe that's why all like as you said, as you said, Michelle, all the other cards play into that card. You know, because mm -hmm. it can be rocky or it can be smooth. But I mean, like what Hershey said is true though. I don't see energy as anything other than what's in the now. So that's why I would want it to go like flow. That's why, you know what I mean? Because I think Hershey's right, rather than like, because what that other thing was saying, I'm like, what? Like, because I only think of energy now, like at this second. Well, there's a reason it's called the current, right? And the current <laughs> present, I, I never really associated that. I thought about that before until recently with our discussions. That's true. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Yeah, when you're getting zapped, you, you know it's the present you feel mm -hmm. like more you're in the yeah. present and you're stuck yeah. there yeah and it's a current yeah the flow the current flow and it's rockier mm -hmm. and we're gonna do and then perhaps karma is the amount of waves you create for yourself that come back to you because when you're in a pool you don't you know the more waves you splash around they bounce back like an earthquake too that's the thing about you feel the waves like it bounces off mountains and if you're in a bowl certain things are stronger so it's just the amount of your energy you put out whether it be good bad positive negative wherever you are those waves come back to you so that's probably what it means about the current and so would upright be good would upright be good karma and uh, uh reverse be bad karma then where I don't we're we're trying to we're trying to put so. yeah I I think there are are some lessons in some not so positive things in life. Um, I don't necessarily think karma is necessarily bad in that regard. You create in the reverse, uh, okay. it just means um, it's a lower vibration. Maybe you're stuck. It's not. It's not to and your opposed, best and highest opposed. good. And opposed to movement, that's fair. Because if you're saying it's it's going like this upright, if it's not going like mm -hmm. this upright, it's just it's like this. Could could be stagnation or yeah. stasis. Now it makes sense because that brings all the things that I thought about it that were dis disparate or separate from one another together in one idea of the card. Thank you guys. <coughs> it's the thunder my dog's barking at. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> It's okay. It's rumbling. It's angry. Okay, our next video. The World Tarot card is often associated with completion, fulfillment, and achievement. It signifies a sense of harmony and unity, as well as the successful conclusion of a journey or cycle. It represents the culmination of efforts and the attainment of goals. So while it's not a directly a yes or no card, like some others in the tarot, its presence in a reading might suggest a positive outcome or resolution to a situation. So that one's more ambiguous. It's not a cut and dry yes or no. Uh, when you are first to be anxiety too. Sorry, cut you off. So yeah. you know mm -hmm. the negative lower vibration, yeah. but and. And when you've when you've completed something, the anxiety of, of what do I do from here sometimes can uh, you know get in that that angsty mind that we have. I've seen it used in political readings for sex trafficking. 
or world sex trafficking. Yeah. That's probably um, why I don't have a really good understanding of the card, because that's probably the most type of, of um, but even that, it doesn't make sense. Well, um, that would go More to a, a personal programming of the cards. Like you need something to represent money laundering. So I have, I have like either had, syndicate. yeah, yeah, I have either put the the six of pentacles, the charity card, as money laundering, because they're it was popping up all the time in those readings. So it was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to associate this with nefarious. Uh, in those types of political reads that I'm doing. So that's that's either the cards programming themselves, or you can just arbitrarily assign a card and say the, the king of wands is Biden and the king of swords is Trump. Or, yeah, or you can assign the devil to Trump. Or the King yeah. of Cups is Biden and the King yeah. of Swords is, yeah. Yeah, you can either do it arbitrarily or see what keeps popping up and reoccurring and let the cards program themselves. But to, to let the cards program themselves, you have to do a lot of reading on a certain type of subject. Time and time and time and time again. Okay, we got an affirmation. Short and sweet. Our affirmation for the 21 world card is... Embrace the world with open arms, for I'm a beacon of completion, success, and infinite possibilities. I am the master of my destiny, and the universe conspires in my favor. So that uh, that's sort of like the the universal pat on the back for a job well done and seeing things through until the end. You you're still on mute, hun. <clears throat> Jane said, when I get three threes in a love reading, I know that there is a third person in the relationship. Interesting. Boy, y'all teach me so much. I just want y'all to know that. Y'all teach me a whole lot. I look forward to when we get into the number cards and all these kind of tips. Hi, Marina. Yeah, we, um, as, as practice, I read quite a bit, um, just, just because I want to improve my skills and abilities and to have a little quicker recall as, uh, exercising the muscles, you know, and hoping not to pause and um and ah uh, and all that so often. But that is why I read a lot in the downtime. Do you read a lot uh, off air, Jeff? I do. Yeah, but it's mostly political. It's like 95% political. Which is well, not you're, good. you're using the tarot as a, um, a tool to help you make sense of the world around you mm -hmm. and a, and a, a therapy substitute. But I think the thing that's dangerous about that is like on YouTube, the people from whom I've been schooled in, 
how to read politically. Whereas I think more emotively yeah. with, with the cards, when you do personal readings, you're less apt to do that. Like based on what right. you said, the cues from the cards could, could be. Um, and I know for a fact, because the ideas that a certain reader has about what those cards mean politically is mm -hmm. now forever imprinted in me as if it were muscle memory. So um, it's not a bad thing. It's just, I think you're more likely to do it with, with bias, like with confirmation bias, you're more apt to do that in a reading like that, as opposed to one where you're reading on the energy of a person that you might see on the other side of the screen. Even then you're going to get a better read, I think, than you would politically. Len Armand's a different story, but. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not struggling with it. It's just, how do, how do I put it all together? Like in a, in a grand tableau in um, a box, a box spread, you know, reading different pairs and, um, see, it's like what Jane said just now. I have one deck that I use for political, whereas like you can use multiple like hundreds for other reads. Some people don't want the, the, the meanings of a whole bunch of really good decks that you use for personal reads to bleed into the, um, the ones you don't, want, you don't want to cross contaminate with the negative mm -hmm. energies. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that political readers make certain cards for positions? Yep, this is my yeah. like the Queen of Sword. The Queen of Swords will be a media card. For I can think of one reader for whom that's the case, or the King of Cups will be Biden, or the I mean the Emperor will be or Putin or the High Priestess. Isn't that the same as programming a deck? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you probably wouldn't like the political reads a lot. No, I have I have a deck that I use, but it's not programmed, but I have a deck that I use, but it's got um more than substantial amount of ugly in it intentionally, and that's why that is my political deck, but I've never programmed it to be See, this be this. this that's be the this, thing though. This, I don't know if they're setting the intention to do that or if as Thomas said they fell into it based on pattern. And yeah, then you don't get out of it. Most of mine has been patterned that it kept coming up in the same types of questions. It's like, mm -hmm. um, like they assign themselves. Yeah, they assign themselves. <laughs> yeah, they do. They assume the like role. Like next coins being the money laundering because it kept showing up when there was nefarious financial dealings going on. Transactional, yeah, yeah. Conditional love. You, mm -hmm. you love my money. I love your influence. And then some people let that bleed into the cops too, like uh, conditional love, because you remember in the, the nostalgia card how something was, and you want to take advantage of that again to try to take advantage of the other person. So then that's transactional in an emotional way. Mm -hmm. If cups are all about emotion, you know, that, so that I just flash to a movie. I have this flash to something like I just want to say I'm, I'm not being judgmental on a program deck because when I'm doing my shadow reads, all of the family cards are programmed to be somebody very specific for who that card represents. So I mm -hmm. would know that this kind of person is this, this kind of person is this, this kind of person is this when I'm doing my shadow reads. I get it. I just, I never thought of it like that. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. I just had a flash of some movie where they're doing some investigative stuff and they're using cards and they're like, holy crap, I've been reading them all wrong. This doesn't represent this. <laughs> or they make a big, dis you make a big discovery about something and like in a political This whole time I've been, yeah, you know, implying yeah, wrong you know, Your whole rule book, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, our story today, if you want to get out your journals and your colored pens, uh, our story is 
on the short side, it's less than five minutes, but right at five. Once upon a time, in a vibrant land, where the sky blazed with the fiery hues of dawn, there lived a young adventurer named Arya. Born under the spirited sign of Ares, Arya possessed a boundless energy and a fierce determination that ignited like a flame within her heart. From a young age, Arya was drawn to the thrill of exploration and the promise of new beginnings. With the ram as her symbol, she charged headfirst into every challenge, fearless and unyielding in her pursuit of greatness. As Arya journeyed through the world, guided by the stars above, she encountered obstacles that tested her courage and strength. But with the fiery spirit of Ares burning bright within her, she faced each trial with unwavering resolve, determined to emerge victorious. In the face of adversity, Arya's passions blazed like a wildfire, propelling her forward with boundless energy and enthusiasm. With every step she took, she embraced the essence of the Ares, bold, fearless, and fiercely independent. But Arya's journey was not without its lessons. Along the way, she learned the importance of patience and self-reflection, discovering that sometimes the greatest victories were not won through brute force but through careful strategy and perseverance. As she ventured deeper into the realms of the unknown, Arya's spirit burned even brighter, illuminating the path before her with a fiery glow of ambition. And with each triumph she achieved, she knew that the adventures had only just begun. As Arya continued her journey, she encountered fellow travelers, each with their own stories and dreams. Some were drawn to her fiery energy, while others marveled at her relentless determination. Together, they formed a bond that transcended words, united by the shared desires to conquer the unknown and carve out their destinies. As the seasons changed and the stars danced overhead, Arya found herself facing the greatest challenge yet. In the heart of the wilderness, she confronted a mighty dragon. She celebrated not only her success, but also the limitless potential that lay within her soul. For Arya, born under the fiery sign of Ares, the world was a canvas waiting to be painted with the bold strokes of her dreams. And as she continued on her journey, guided by the fiery spirit of her zodiac sign, its scales shimmering like molten gold in the light of the sun, with a roar that shook the earth, the dragon unleashed its fury, testing Arya's courage and strength like never before. But Arya, fueled by the fiery spirits of Ares, stood her ground, her eyes blazing with determination. With a swift motion, she drew her sword and charged forward, her heart pounding with adrenaline as she faced the beast head on. With each strike, she channeled the primal energy of her zodiac sign, tapping into the boundless reserves of her inner strength. The battle raged on, the clash of steel against scales echoing through the valley. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the world in a fiery glow, Arya delivered the final blow, vanquishing the dragon and claiming victory as her own. But in the aftermath of the battle, Arya realized her triumph was not just a victory over the dragon, but a triumph of the spirit. For in facing her fears and overcoming adversity, she had discovered the true power that lay within her the power of resilience, determination, and unwavering faith in herself. With the dragon defeated and the stars twinkling overhead, Arya continued on her journey, her spirit burning as brightly as ever. And as she gazed upon the horizon, she knew that the adventure was far from over. For Arya, born under the fiery sign of Ares, the world was boundless playground, filled with endless possibilities and adventures waiting to unfold. As she forged ahead, guided by the fiery spirit of her zodiac sign, she embraced each new challenge with open arms, eager to discover what lay beyond the next horizon. And so, with courage in her heart and fire in her soul, Arya ventured forth into the unknown, ready to write the next chapter of her epic tale. For in the tapestry of life, woven with threads of fate and destiny, she knew that the journey was just beginning. 
and with the fiery spirit of Aries as her guiding star, she was destined for greatness beyond measure. So that, that nearly put me to sleep. That guy's voice just drones on and on. I thought it was fine. I liked it. So you got, you got a week uh, to compare against last week. Everything was um, AI voice, and then everything today was my voice. So go ahead and view and tell me which one you want me to continue on with. Uh, but I have I have the right to do as I please. Because I'm stubborn that way. <laughs> what do you want to hear? <laughs> Only because you're going to do what you want to hear. Really want. So any, any insights that anybody wants to share from... Um, Brainstorming time during the story. I have something. I wrote a, I wrote a poem. Um, what else is new, right? Um, at your feet, someone threw you a bone. Can't hold back, but you kept silent. Yet through the universe, you wouldn't let their words be perverse. This part of a cosmic frequency to succeed. The vibration of your world. Hop, skip, and a jump away. You never tripped the light fantastic until you glided through ebbs and flows as if you were on a ride sublime and left any of their uncertainty and doubt behind. Very nice. Beautiful. And then... Uh... You, you said that you were going to look at a different funding model for the um, tarot poetry book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's other subs. I might use Substack. Um, some people who are on YouTube use it uh, because they're constantly interfacing with their audience. So some readers use it, um, especially astrologers, because if they're doing weekly reads and such and they want to put them on paper to further elaborate on it or track the changes and whatever like i'm thinking of going that route um because honestly uh, i think print media is going down the drain um i think not only well print media is down the drain but i think books are just going to go down the drain too like i really feel that way people don't want to hold the book anymore and if they want something they want to tie it to something that's integral about their own lives they don't have time to consume news the way they did. They don't have time to consume books the way they once did. You don't just sit and read anymore. Like I have to accept the fact that the world has changed to the point where like it's constantly like this and this is a good a good thing to have because you think about it, like someday probably politicians, if they ever control financing, will run this way where they have a certain amount of money and then they have the platform of the internet. I mean, I just think everything's so fragmented, you know, like what people like. And there are people that are dabbling in YouTube, like I'm one of them where I'll dabble in the political videos and then I'll dabble in tarot and then I'll dabble in like what's well on Nat Geo about Nostradamus or the Antichrist. And then you get back what you want. So. I kind of feel like writing has to become more niche oriented based on the, not just the audience, because that obviously would appeal to a certain audience, but it has to be based on what consumerism is about nowadays. And I don't think I put my finger on that. And I don't think anybody that, I mean, I've put up tons of money to fund both of those books and I got really no return. So 
if it's this easy for me, I feel like I should be doing it on something like Substack or Reddit or on um, Simile or and just like put it out there for people to read. And, you know, because you get two or three cents on the dollar for each page that you get on Kindle. That's like any or you get like three hundredths of a cent for a page, actually, because I think it's like point oh oh three. So have you thought of making that, it an audiobook, like your poetry book, reading it I either? Do have one that does sell better as an audiobook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one is out as an audiobook. And there are many platforms and you just gotta do it once and put it up there, you know. I know, I know. And like um yeah, Marina, I was an English major too. Yeah. It's a dagger. I mean, it's not a dagger to my heart, but it's still like, if you think about it, it's like the time you take to actually design something that has a basis, because I'm not an artist, so I always commission someone to do it. The expense to do that almost matches the, can match the cost of putting the book together. You know what I mean? If you sub mm -hmm. publish or whatever, so. But now you have AI, Thomas uses something, I don't yeah. know, I'm just you just yeah, a program yeah. to but yeah i hear you i hear you what you're saying oh i'd love to hear just like on ai and on um substack you can use ai like ai will read you the stuff just automatically if you ever watch um, uh I, denise Siegel, she uses it on youtube i consume my youtube content at double speed if it's not live um, just because I can process quickly, you know, I'm, I'm not, um, like I, I went from Stephen Hawking lectures to learning how to do speed math in my head. And, you know, just at the beginning of the pandemic and, and being retired because I wanted to keep my, my mind stimulated and not, um, turn into brain mush i like to listen to them on half speed i told you this backstage i like to listen to them on half speed they sound drunk some of the time yeah. <laughs> especially me because i've got a, a slow cadence anyway they laugh like, ah. I'm just like, oh <laughs> like that's my biggest kick that's pretty sick <laughs> and i yeah. rhymed again Hi, Jane. Take care. I hope you're feeling better. Hello, Heather. And with that, I think we're going to be just about done. Any closing thoughts on our World card, guys. I found uh, it. No, I've got a lot to study, though. I can tell you that much. I yeah, mean, <laughs> I've got a lot more to study on it. Um, it's a lot more. Um, you, you tied everything about what I've heard of it, about, knew about it together. So it all made sense, especially the stuff about karma. Hershey was able to do that, and so was Michelle. So. I always love this this type, this type of show um, because at the end of it, especially with the creativity, I can keep writing for my book and I can get done. <laughs> without this thought. So I'm good with it. I love it. Well, we have officially gone through the major arcana. Arcana. I don't, this, I've heard it every which way and nobody's so i'll ride the fence once again i'll be switching yeah. i give you although i didn't read this exercise because i realize it it's i would like to go over it really quick with people about the the world's exercise in this book because i realize now i got to start from the beginning it's the it's the fool's the fool's journey is complete and it's time to unpack your backpack if the world is about fulfillment then this exercise reveals not only how you can feel at one with the cosmos, but also at one with yourself. And what you need is the backpack, drawstring, something that you created with the full card. And 
what you'll experience is being part of the tarot. So essentially it's, you've come full circle, the fool in you stepped off into the big wide world, met up with your other mirror images of yourself and has now come to understand that with self-awareness, you can become the complete version of yourself fulfilled to your potential. So then in this exercise, you would take the fool's backpack paper from the box or drawer. So essentially the full card, the exercise I, I didn't realize at the time was to um, list, so you unfold it, you look at the five items that you listed for your journey. Do they still convey the same message, invoke the same feelings? If any have changed or no longer are no longer relevant, strike them off your list. Unpack your bag completely if you like, or you you may see things from a different perspective than when you, when you began. If not, you may have to do a little more work on yourself. Then you reflect for a while and consider your own tarot journey so far, or this is because it's a tarot book, as it's not over yet. Has it been easier than you imagined or has it taken you into a world you'd rather not have gazed at? The fool in you can now face the true self and realize that you have the power to connect to the mystical nature of the universe because you are part of it. For the next stage of your journey, you're going to meet a whole host of other characters. But for now, fold the paper up and replace it in the box until later. So this, it's gonna have um, exercises, I'm guessing, for the, the court cards and meeting the court cards. So I wish I had realized this in the beginning of the, um, because it could have been a cute little exercise we did all together from the fool, but um, yeah. we could still continue on. I mean, perhaps I'll go through what the fool said. I mean, I don't know. And um, we could write down some key things if it's relevant with the court cards, if it's something that interests you guys. But um, I really am taking more to this book and understanding the experience it's trying to guide me. Oh, ooh, what was that? Uh, that was that was me um, getting oh, a so a nap. <laughs> oh, I was say they're in agreement. <laughs> uh, then an Allen wrench fell off my table. Oh my god! <laughs> Interesting. Just know that the fool in you can now face the true self and realize that you have the power to connect to the mystical nature of the universe because you are part of it. Yeah, and the the unpacking of the the backpack, you know, what did you originally have? Is it still there? Did you exhaust it um, along the way? And what did you pick as pick up as knowledge and um, souvenirs along the way? So, I guess it is a time to stop and pause and repack and get ready for your next journey. Uh, I know people that cruise a lot have a specific type of packing that they do in, in packing cubes and stuff so that they can get ready at a moment's notice when they, when they find that cheap discounted cruise at the last moment mm -hmm. so that they can take off. Well, the five items it recommended, it said, think about what you would take with you on your journey. You can take five different items. There are five tarot spirit energies. These five things can be anything you like, practical items you need on the journey, things you can't be without, ideas or concepts. In fact, anything that you think matters to you or you love dearly. Take your time, don't rush. Once they are written on the paper, you can't change them. Write down the five items beneath your bag. You are now about to set off on a journey. It can be anywhere you like, as long as there is a destination in your mind. Write down the name of the place or destination at the bottom of the paper. Then you finally fold up that paper, put it in a secret box or drawer, place the white crystal quartz on top of it because you need it to charge it with illuminating energy. Remember you are investing in your own spirit and adventure into this tarot journey. It will bring you to a deeper connection with the universe. You're not going to look at the paper again until the end of your tarot journey, which would have been at the world. Today, yeah. So that'll be something I'll have to do. And then go through the this whole book again, mm -hmm. you know, from the beginning. Yeah. And like I said, that if you if you don't have your goals 
uh, written down, you, you don't have goals because you're not being reminded of it and working towards it all the time. If it's not down and in front of you in multiple places, I mean, have, have one in the bathroom, have one on your nightstand, have one folded up in your wallet, have one at your desk at work and same list, same goals. But um, as long as it's written down and you keep seeing it, it reminds you to keep working at it and chipping away. Harley uh, has a question for Michelle. Mm -hmm. Can you write down more than one place? Um, it just says, according to this, it's just asked for one, but I mean, um, hold on one second. Let me go back to the beginning. Um, write down the name of the place. So you are now, so you can be anywhere you like, as long as you, as long as there's a destination in your mind, write down the name of the place or destination at the bottom of the paper. So, um, I'm guessing it could be more than one destination, but it's a journey. It, it might, it might have be a, a separate journey. It might be your next journey. So you may have to do yeah. some prioritization. So the very beginning, it says, imagine you have a bag or backpack, just like the fool, you know, how he carries it on his stick. Um, just like the fool or a bag that you could carry easily on a long journey. Now draw it on the piece of paper or copy the fool's bag from the illustration. Write your name on the bag. Now think about what you would take with you on your journey. You can take five different items. These five things can be anything, you know, from practical to things you can't be without, ideas or concepts, anything that matters to you the most. Um, once you you've written them down, you cannot change them though. So think about it. Uh, write down the five items beneath your bag. So Same. now you are now about to set off on a journey. It can be anywhere you like, as long as there's a destination in your mind. So write down the name of the place or, so, I mean, you can have more than two perhaps, but I don't know if it's necessary. I, I, I think decide. it's wanting you to focus on the journey. Yeah. So just so to I, I think so one much. in this instance, just yeah. one. And okay. then they want you to commit to it because they don't want you to erase it and change it. Yeah. And it says taking the first step of the fool's tarot journey is a bit of an adventure too. It's like a first romance or infatuation because you're not sure where you're going and what to expect. But like the fool, your journey is going to be fun if you develop your trust in the cards as your personal guides. So it's, you know, just pick one, I guess, to start. I don't know. <laughs> like Thomas was saying, that way you could focus on the experience. And then the next one, and I mean, I can even do, maybe we'll do a, um, I'm all, maybe Thomas will want to do another video just to go through the, the extra, the first major kind of exercises, you know, heaven and then if you, someone wanted to try and do it, you know, the magician would be next and what you would need and the exercise to understand that, one, you know. Well, if uh, our guests don't have anything else, and if we don't have any more questions, thank you for, for asking questions, Harley. And may I enter? I'm sorry. And if I'm going to complete this whole exercise, what you would need is a piece of paper, a pen, imagination, a white quartz crystal. And then you'll experience a sense of excitement and wonder as you begin the journey. So when you do write all that down, it says to... Um, Fold up the paper, put it in a box or a drawer, place the white quartz crystal on top to charge it with illuminating energy. And remember, so make sure after you do all that, put a white quartz crystal on top of it. Interesting. Sounds like a fun activity. Yeah. That, I figured that was an important piece to provide if somebody was going to try and follow this along what I went over, you know? So Michelle, what, what do you have coming up other than, than work week? Work week? 
Yep. Hershey, what do you have coming up? Uh, well, I've downsized quite a bit, so not too much. Um, I have meta messages tomorrow. Um, and then Wednesday with you and then, uh, Friday I am with Deanne and PD if she's feeling better. Um, and I think there's one or two, other. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place right now, but I will be with the, on Deanne's channel, um, uh, Friday at 7 p.m. And then this Saturday is the scavenger hunt between Allie and Tamsi. And then I'm going to probably see how the next week goes. But I'm getting real close to moving after this week. And I'm going to be thinning out my schedule as much as possible until I get moved and get done. I understand. Um, Jeff, what's coming up for you? Uh Nothing planned yet, although something is cooking Nothing. with um, Care Bear. I do have uh, with Moon Scarab and Heather tonight on Heather's channel and mine, um, and I'm hoping on Moon Scarabs as well, um, a night of poetry and tarot and cards. So I hope you guys come and join us. But other than that, I just wait for my guides to tell me what to do. I tell myself what to do, but lately I haven't been that moved. So I've been trying to squeeze things in here and there, but um, I'm just letting it flow the way Michelle <laughs> was talking about. So okay. Well, if you if you three will um, stick around, and we'll have an after back backstage uh, session after we close up here. I, I want to thank you all for being here as my guests and contributors. Um, it's very important that um, we have these different inputs. Um, Perspectives. The, the, yeah, the talking points can uh, yeah. help them all. And thank you viewers for being there and sticking through with us. Uh, we got through the major arcana and remember be kind to yourself be kind to others and go out and make it a great day hershey was pulsating so we lost her for a minute there